Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I had a whole bunch of people send me this story, and I got this version from News Nation. And I often talk about if you're unhappy with the government, you can vote. You get to vote, and you get to actually try to have your voice heard. And a lot of people complain and go, Steve, if I vote, I'm just one of millions and millions and millions of people who voted. My voice gets so diluted that I can't ever actually make anything happen. This idea that I can participate in democracy is kind of like uh, uh, an overblown promise. And uh, no, 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 no. It turns out <laughs> that once in a while, the electorate can make changes that are important. Headline, Michigan town votes to oust entire government over Chinese factory plans. So this is happening in a little town in Michigan, kind of up in this area here of the Lower Peninsula. But uh, a rural Michigan town voted to oust its entire local government this past election after the town board approved a Chinese-affiliated electric battery plant. So there's a lot going on here, but residents of Green Charter Township in Michigan strongly disapproved of the local board's decision to approve the building of a Chinese-connected electric vehicle battery plant in their community. So after the election, a locksmith came in Tuesday night and changed the locks on the ousted officials' former offices. The offices were then empty. Now, this is quite severe, but it's fascinating. The project was expected to create more than 2,300 jobs. It was going to be a $2.3 billion investment. So you can see why some people might have looked at it and said, oh, that's a good thing. Somebody wants to come to town to build a factory, hire 2,300 people, and invest $2.3 billion. That's a good thing. But a lot of people in town are going, but the people doing it are Chinese. Do we want a Chinese factory here? And so apparently, enough people in town didn't want it. And this is not the first time it's happened. It's not even the first time it's happened in Michigan in the sense that there's another town down this way called Marshall, where a couple companies came in and said, we want to build a gigantic battery plant here. And the place they wanted to build it was pretty much undeveloped. But they said, to build this plant, we're going to have to widen roads, put in infrastructure, and there's going to be this gigantic plant on the edge of town. And a lot of people said, we don't like that idea. They go, yeah, but it'll create jobs. And people go, uh, so? Uh, I don't need a job. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, these things do change the landscape in every meaning of that word. So, you know, I'm in Michigan, and, and Michigan has a lot of automobile manufacturing facilities or related. So I'm used to driving along and seeing a gigantic plant that makes engines or assembles cars or trucks and buses, GM truck and bus. And so you see these things, you recognize them, but you're driving out in the middle of nowhere down the country road, and now it's... Wide open fields. Five years from now, it could be another big old plant. If you lived in that neighborhood, you might not like that. So you've got a right. You've got a right to be upset by these things. So my family members fought communism, and you're bringing it right here, a local resident said. When News Nation visited the town back in April, a resident who had no experience in politics said, I don't know why they would approve it other than somebody must be benefiting from it. Now, that guy is suggesting that the politicians who voted for it are benefiting, it, benefiting from it in some unfair way. But that's what he's thinking. He then ran for clerk, and he won. So this is his first foray into politics. He's, he, he won his election. He said, we just plan on making it as difficult as we possibly can for them to continue the process. They don't have a site plan. They don't have permits. So we're not their friend and he's referring to how they're going to handle a company called Goshen, Goshen, G-O-T-I-O-N, Goshen. However, what angered a lot of people was that the plant is rumored to be connected to somehow communists in China. And so you might say, but Steve, that's, that sounds kind of far-fetched there. Well, it is a Chinese-affiliated company. They denied allegations that they are aligned with the Communist Party. However, their corporate records actually say the company shall set up a party organization and carry out party activities in accordance with the constitution of the Communist Party of China. And so party activities, I think there, 
have a different different connotation than the party you have in the lunchroom for uh, for Maggie when it's her birthday. Right now, we are not on friendly terms with China. They are threatening us. I consider them the enemy. I don't want them here either, said a resident, Harry King. So with the overwhelming distrust for the town's government, a clerk from a neighboring township ran the election and counted the ballots. Cheers erupted as voters heard the results from the recall election held to vote out the entire town board. The new board was then sworn in on Wednesday, and the process to keep Goshen out will begin. Now, Goshen has bought the property, so the new board is expecting a long road ahead, but they said they're willing to fight. We want everyone to have a voice and not have any secrecy anymore. This whole thing that went down with Goshen was horrible from the first go-round. And like I said, the people have spoken. News Nation reached out to Goshen for a comment. The company said, we are a multinational company, don't believe in political posturing, and are still committed to bringing thousands of jobs to the state of Michigan. So I can tell you a couple things. If this company's already bought the property and they apply for permits, the permits are denied, they're going to wind up in court. And the question is, does the township really want to spend all this money fighting this? And, and they can. They can, and we'll see what happens. So that's the one thing. But the other thing really is this, is that you got these board members who got voted out. And I salute the people of this township for doing this, because this is what I've always said. If you're unhappy with the people who've been elected, elect other people. And the one guy who said, I didn't understand this at all, so I'm going to run. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run. If not me, who? You know. He, so he ran, and he's up there now. So that's one of the greatest examples of democracy in action. And here's the thing. Back up a couple years. Back up a couple years and, and, and think back to the process that got us here. Okay? So you got this township, Green Charter Township, out in the middle of nowhere. And I don't mean that as an insult. It's <clears throat> well north of Grand Rapids, but it's kind of out there. It's out there. And I suspect that this company came into town because they're looking for a big chunk of property near some major roads someplace in the Midwest. That's all they're looking for. And they found it. They approach the township and they go, we want to bring in this plant. It's going to create 2,300 jobs and $2.34 billion in investment. Now, all you got to do is think of the Foxconn situation in Wisconsin to understand these promises don't always get kept. Okay. But if they bought a gigantic chunk of property, they say they're going to build on it. Okay. So the locals start piping up going, we don't like that idea. We don't like that idea. And the people who are on the board apparently said, well, we think it's a good idea. Now, if you are on the board or Congress or legislature or assembly, you're a group of people and you're a part of that and you're elected to represent people, you should have your thumb firmly on the pulse of what those people are thinking and what they desire. And so if you voted in favor of the Chinese battery factory, despite the fact that your constituents hated it, you got no one to blame but yourself for the fact you're out of a job right now, or at least you're off that job. People in town overwhelmingly did not like the idea. So when the battery factory people came to town and said, we'd like to put a plant here, you should probably ask around a little bit. And go, hey, someone's proposing to bring in a plant. It's going to create 2,300 jobs, $2 billion in investment. What do you think? Oh, that sounds like a great idea. They're from China. Ooh, doesn't sound like a great idea. So you ask around, you find out that people hate the idea. Oh, and you vote against it. But it appears that the board said, no, we like this idea. And people were piping up and complaining about it. They were. And the board said, eh, we like it anyways. So, recall election, gone. All of them. Now, I've said before, and I've said it, I'll say it again many times, be careful what you wish for. Because these people all got elected basically on a single issue. They got elected on the idea that we're going to keep that battery plant out. They still got to run the township. <laughs> so they've got meetings ahead of them discussing budgets and bylaws and ordinances and ordinance violations, and trash 
pick up contracts, all of that stuff. They got all that stuff ahead of them. It's all going to happen. But, but they did make the point. And for that, a lot of people around the nation have spotted this and said that's a fascinating experiment right there. Because you had locals who were against something that their elected officials said, no, but we're for it. Doesn't matter that you're for it. You represent other people. Are they for it? And that, in my mind, is really the problem. Quite often, politicians forget they're not in Lansing or Washington or Sacramento or Green Charter Township to represent their interests. They're elected to represent other people's interests. It's a great story. Excuse the bad edits. I've been coughing this morning. Don't know why. I think I'll live. But the story is from News Nation, where a very dear friend of mine works. John, thank you very much. Michigan Town votes to oust entire government over Chinese factory plans. The story written by Brian Enton and Devin Markham. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. The meek shall inherit the earth. Uh, if that's okay with everyone.